I'm editing the video from my trip to Longaquila. As you can see, Longaquila is just there, here. Yeah, I'm gonna add the title here. So I'm gonna put here a title. I already have one for Cloherna. So this is the one for Cloherna. As you can see, it says Cloherna. I'm gonna copy this one and use it here. Just want to make sure it's aligned with this. Oh, here we go. At the start of this video. Now I'm gonna type here Longaquila. And here we go. We have a title, Longaquila. Let's play that. I like this view to display and good. So let's see how this all blends together. Looks nice, right? Looks nice. If you wonder what this uh, fade from black is, uh, my, my camera does it for some reason. So, I don't know, I just leave it because it looks cool. I like it. Um, yeah, so let's continue. There's some more views here, from different shots. All right, I found this place where you see the colors go over bright, so the exposure is incorrectly done by my camera when I was recording. So it's nice exposure here, and then the exposure is bad. So what I did, I, I made a split here in this point. I split here, and until, until this video is bad, and then when it is good here, it's okay, right? So what I'm gonna do with this clip now here, I'm gonna go here to color editing, and I'm gonna do a few things. First of all, I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna enable the keyframe key framing for corrector. So in this first frame, I want my curve to be unchanged. So I'm gonna just put it like this. Now let's see where we go. I think this is the brightest spot. So we're gonna move it down. And now I'm gonna move it down here. I'm not sure if I'm satisfied with the colors. I'm gonna decide where the shadows are, which location are the good for shadows, which location is good for meads. I think this is this looks okay. I can add another point to make it smoother. I don't know, do I want another point? Maybe I wanna do it like this, something like that. It's not gonna be perfect because it's not recorded in, in row, um, but yeah, something like this maybe, yeah. And then uh, my curve in the beginning looks like this. That's okay, I'm gonna keep it that way. When I have better, uh, I don't know. This is just a video from my from my trip. So yeah, let, let me see what I'm saying in this video. It's just this terrain is full of slippery terrain and it's steep and I can just slide down to this valley. You can slide down to the down. valley. Look at that. But yeah. Flying planes made me uh, more, I mean, I don't fear this anymore. This is the typical high. Yeah, flying planes, I love flying planes. Look at me, I love flying planes. You see, me and plane, that's me and plane. I'm rendering now this uh, video. As you can see, it's a timeline too, so what I did, I created a second timeline with the input from the first timeline so that I can apply the colors over all the video, you know. So the first timeline consists of uh, clips, multiple clips, and I set colors for some individual clips as well, um, some animations there. And then the second timeline is from the first timeline, and I'm adjusting colors so they are so juicy and HDR and you know right the video is now rendered it has uploaded to YouTube let's check my YouTube studio okay here it is my video 
Oh, it's available instant. Oh, it's available. Hmm. It was fast. Let's see it. Looks okay. Can I make it HD? No, not yet. Yeah, when it's rendered, it plays much smoother than the uh, than when I'm editing it. However, this MacBook Air M2 chip does a very good job in editing videos, you know. All right, so I'm going to show you how I created this two timeline uh, situation. So you see, I have timeline one and timeline two, right? And here we can switch. This is my timeline number one. And timeline number one, or maybe this view is better. You can see like these are the number of clips I recorded with my camera. Each clip, uh, well, I just put them one after another. I did some cutting. So this view here is perfect for cutting. It works very well with the touchpad on my Mac. So I need to buy a touchpad for my PC as well, because you see, this is what I do with touchpad. Using mouse for that is super, super annoying. So what you do is right click or click two finger, two finger click. And here you have a split. And that's how simple this is. You just split. And then say uh, you want to just adjust. So in this view here, you're going to be seeing, you see, how this frame on this side and this side, how they align. So after this, this, this clip here, then it's after this connection point, you have this clip here, right? So you may actually, you know, see how this will mesh together, you know, which can avoid jumps or something like this. Let me just undo this. Another cool thing in DaVinci is all those transitions you have. So uh, you have them here uh, in effects, right? And you have like video transitions, audio titles, and so on. So that's cool. And these are some predefined templates. But if you want to, you can go ahead, use this fusion here. And here you can define your own effects yourself if you like. Okay. So that's, that's what you can do. Now, there is an option to edit colors, and there is lots of different controls here you can use to edit colors. And I'm going to show you, uh, this is my timeline number one, I'm going to show you timeline number two. So timeline number two, uh, I put here, on this timeline number two, I put timeline number one. So you see timeline number one is an input to timeline number two. So this is how you create a hierarchical like video editing. So you have first timeline. You glue it uh, from several clips. Maybe you want to put a tree of timelines, right? So I, I just did two layers, like timeline one, timeline two. But you can, for example, have timeline one, after timeline one, put timeline two, and then timeline three is where you put those timelines, right? So you can like mix and match. It's quite amazing in DaVinci, I love that. So this is timeline two. On the timeline two, I put timeline one. The way you do it is very simple. When you have a timeline, it appears here in your media. So normally you just drag a clip onto your timeline, right? And, and it appears on your timeline. Um, but your timeline itself is here as well. So you can drag it here as well, you see? So you can, this way you can create a timeline as an input uh, to another timeline. And yeah, uh, you can do everything you want with those video clips. You can mix and match them if you want. Um, so yeah, so what I did here was color editing. I just wanted to give this video a nicer, uh, nicer appearance because the original video looked a little bit uh, washed out. The colors weren't good. They were kind of like reddish, greenish. I don't know. There was sun missing. Like uh, when I was on this hike, I can tell you there was a lot of sun and I tried to capture it on this video and I still don't, I'm not sure if there is enough, enough saturation here in this color because um, you know the, the the colors when it's sunny day they are really really juicy and um, I tried to make them juicy but this is as much as I could do because this video is not in you know high definition recorded it's not I mean high definition of the color right it's only 8-bit color so 
you can't really do that much with this 8-bit color. Um, if it was recorded in 10-bit color, maybe that would be, uh, you know, more editable. I wonder if DaVinci can support a higher bitness of the, you know, of the input. Perhaps it does, right? It does support timeline as an input, so it has to support videos in higher bitness. Not sure. So what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm having this, these curves, right? I showed you previously how I created an animation because there was some fragment uh, in the video where, uh, let's say, um, there was this, I, I, I moved camera down and it was very, became very uh, you know, bright and I just wanted to correct it right so off here. Down now. So this would be, you know, the colors wouldn't be good. So I corrected it with animated curves, so I animated them. But here I'm on timeline 2, and on timeline 2 I just wanted to set global, uh, you know, global color settings. And uh, I should have probably used a little bit of animated curves, because you see, this color set, for example, I'm not sure if I'm 100% happy about this setting here. The, 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 it's a little bit, I would adjust it, right? I would adjust all this, because, you know, but I, I didn't want to spend that much time on it. I just wanted to find the settings that's okay for most of the movie. So this first frame to look okay. And then, you know, we went further down. And this valley here, I wanted it to be more or less the way it is in real life. So this grass is really so like greenish and this is so yellow. And like there's a mix of colors there. These are nice and green, you know. It's 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 island uh, when it's a sunny day. Colors are really really of the nature. They are really nice, and I wanted to make sure that you can see them. Um, the sky was really blue as well, so I didn't want it to become like purple or something. You can see a little bit purplish here. It, it's kind of gray, but it, it's, it looks a little bit purplish, and it's really hard to remove this purpleness uh, because once you make it less purple, then everything becomes green and. You know, it's it's kind of hard to do that. What else I used? I used these controls here, lift gamma gain and offset. So I just manipulated this a little bit to get to the color, you know, gradation I wanted, as well as this HDR. So I adjusted dark, shadow and line. And you can see I set different saturation for the dark and for the light because those, those dark spots, when they saturated, they kind of unnatural, right? I wanted to increase saturation so that I have this nicer color in the sky and in the sun, but I didn't want these dark spots to be like unnaturally saturated, so I reduced to half and 0 0.75 for shadows, right? So, so this is how I achieved this, you know, more natural color, more, more really sunny day color rather than just fake saturation, you know, like an old TV. <laughs> and I also wanted to add a filmic. Uh, to it, like to make it more, um, you know, filmic experience, like on a film camera instead of digital. You can see that this uh, Cloverna here, these stones, they are looking more like on a film camera than uh, than on digital, right? It's more like a photography rather than, you know, digital editing. I wanted also, you know, to emphasize this contrast between different plants on the mountains. Because by default, uh, the way the camera captured the colors, uh, these colors here and this, they were all the same kind of brightness. And then you wouldn't see that this is one, two, three, four, like five plants, you know, they're different distances. And, you know, you want to see this space without the proper contrast in those places. You know, you wouldn't see that it actually is number of plants. So that's important. And this look of here is like much brighter, right? So you can see that it's far, far away and so on. So it's, it's you know, you need to do this kind of editing because then um, you uh, show this uh, space and, um, you know, there's a lot of things you want to, like this contrast from the, from the sun, right? Sun is shining, so the grass is very, like, fiery, but then there's these dark shadows here because of the contrast from, from the sun and the shadow and, like, it really looks cool. So you want to capture all this. And when you just record with your, uh, especially phone camera, this is Nokia XR20 camera, quite good. But you know, it, it doesn't, it, it wouldn't get images that, that look this cool, right? It, it would just record a video as is and, and then, you know, then you need to worry to do some editing yourself. All right, so that was my um, 
uh, introduction for my uh, creative workflow in Da Vinci for my uh, you know video editing for my trip to Lungquilla and you know maybe I record more videos about my creative workflows. Thank you for watching.